Hey guys, this is Jeff Stanick with Figured Out Baseball. Got a really good Figured Out Baseball podcast today in our series that we call the Real Dirt Podcasts, where we spend about 30 minutes talking about one particular subject. In our normal podcasts, which you can find on the Figured Out Baseball website at figuredoutbaseball.com or on Apple Podcasts, as well as Spotify and several other uh, outlets for podcasts. But on our typical podcast, we jump around and talk about a bunch of different things, you know, throughout the hour, give or take that we spend with guests. But again, these real dirt podcasts, we talk about one specific subject and kind of try to exhaust it, which is why we call it the real dirt. We try to get our hands dirty in one particular thing and, and talk about it in as extensively as you would want to, as you'd want us to, if you, if this is a topic you're interested in. Uh, today, I'm really excited to have Descahe Bomberry on the podcast. He's the pitching coach, recruiting coordinator, and mental skills coach at Sacramento City College, part of the junior college system, the CCCAA in California. And today, we're going to be talking about why do you practice? That's our real dirt um, subject today is why do you practice? And this all stemmed from a tweet that Coach Bomber put out. Uh, in December. If you don't follow him on Twitter, it, it's a good account to follow. He gives a lot of good insight, and especially you kind of see the mental skills coach uh, part of him come out on Twitter sometimes, as well as a lot of good stuff that he's doing at practice. But on December 1st of 2021, he, he tweeted out uh, a tweet that said, ask a player why they practice. You'll get a lot of different answers. You should practice so you're prepared for the biggest moment of your career. Everything you do should be preparing for that moment. Understand that, and you'll practice differently. And I messaged him and just said this would be a great podcast topic, and he agreed. And so we scheduled this podcast, and here we are. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick background on Coach Bomber before we jump into the podcast with him. He started out coaching uh, his coaching career from 1997 through 98. He was at Eastern Kentucky, a Division One school in Richmond, Kentucky. While he was there, he got his master's degree in physical education. Then he was hired in August of 1998 back home. He went home to uh, to Sacramento, was hired at Sac City, and has been there ever since. He's been tremendously successful while at Sac City, moving his pitchers on to the four-year level, and in particular the Division I level. He's also uh, been tremendously successful in producing professional players as well as several major leaguers. Um, at SEC, he is also a full-time fitness instructor. He spent time coaching in the Cape Cod League as well as with USA Baseball's 18U national team. And he's fresh off of speaking at the 2020, I'm sorry, 2022 um, ABCA convention in Chicago, which I'm sure was a thrilling experience for him. Uh, I was I was there but didn't get a chance to hear him as I was representing Figured Out Baseball there. But uh, Coach Bomber, I certainly appreciate you being on the podcast today with us. No, no problem, Jeff. I really appreciate being on. Today's podcast is brought to you by Diamond Kinetics. No matter what season you're in, our friends at Diamond Kinetics are here to help you train smarter, get better, and so you can dominate on the diamond this season. DK's line of mobile-based motion technology products give players and coaches the ability to practice smarter, practice more effectively, and have more confidence in the batter's box and on the mound. DK's Pitch Tracker Smart Baseball and mobile app provides easy-to-understand data, metrics, and pitching analysis right at your fingertips. You'll immediately see velocity, spin rate, and spin direction on all of your pitches. And newly updated features such as auto pitch detection, plus newly added metrics such as spin efficiency and horizontal and vertical break help you command and control your entire arsenal of pitches. With Diamond Kinetics, you will train smarter and get better and have more confidence on the field this spring. So, Coach Bomber, to get into this podcast, I would like to know if there was anything behind that tweet when you first sent it out. Did something did something happen at practice? Did you read something else? Did you just kind of wake up in the morning and kind of have that thought? Just kind of curious, what prompted the tech or the the, the tweet to begin with? Uh, I think something probably I probably read something that motivated me. I don't I don't recall, but I, I do know that you know at that time of the year we were done practicing as a team. But, you know, you still need to work and you still need to get yourself prepared. And there's a time at that time of the year, right? It's the first week of December, guys are kind of on their own and they can go one of two ways. They can continue what they were doing, which is the right thing to do. Or they can go, well, you know, I just did this for the last, you know, 10 or 11 weeks. I need a break uh, and I'll, I'll get back at it, you know, January 1st. Uh, and so, you know, if you are, if you're striving to become the best possible player that you can be, then it's pretty easy to keep practicing. If you just
just want to be on the team, if you just want to be a teammate, or you know, maybe you really haven't decided yet what you want to do with your career, then you, know, you might take that time off. And so that was kind of my, my motivation behind it. Uh, I think part of it, too, is when you look at how people train, right? And this is not a knock on what anybody's doing anywhere, any facility, any program. But when you look at when you look at how people train and what they train, you have to ask yourself sometimes, like, when is that ever going to show up? When is that ever going to be needed? And, you know, I think a lot of times we, we invest a lot of time and energy in things that, just don't happen all that often. Do you do you specifically mean by that just mainly focusing your practice time on things that that are going to happen the most? Essentially, so I'm I'm more as a coach. You know, I was on the offensive side of things, and it and it's uh, on the offensive side of things. I think that there are a lot of teams out there that spend too much time working on first and third offensive plays, or you know, bunt defenses on defense, or 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 rundowns or just, you know, things that in a, in a 56 game college season are going to happen twice, but they spend time on it constantly. Is that sort of what you mean? But, but on the, uh, on all sides of the game, just spending more time on the things that happen the most, which on the pitching side of things is, you know, obviously throwing different pitches, throwing for strikes, even, you know, PFPs or whatever it may be. But is yeah. that what you mean by that? Or am I putting words in your mouth? No, that was, that was, you know, that's part of it. You know, it's, there's a handful of things on defense that you should be good at. There's a handful of things on offense that you should be good at. There's a handful of things pitching wise that you should be good at. And from just a practice design standpoint, that's where your time should be spent. You know, if, so that was kind of my motive. That was part of the motivation. The other part of the motivation was just understanding, like literally as a player, why are you practicing? What are you hoping to achieve when you come to practice? You know, why are you there that day when it's 35 degrees and the grass is wet and, you know, it's 9 o'clock in the morning? Why are you there? Because you don't have to be. And so that was the other part, too, is, you know, getting guys to think about, okay, is this something I really, or just anyone, is this something I really want to do? Is this something I really want to be good at? Because I think, you know, when you're in that, that unpleasant practice environment, it's really easy to just kind of go through the motions and like, all right, I got three hours to be here. I'm freezing. I just wanted to be down and go have lunch. And plenty of guys will do that. Um, probably plenty of coaches who do the same thing. Uh, but when you look at it through a different lens, um, I think it might change how guys go about getting their work in. Is that something that you – find that you have to remind your players a lot or, or is that do you, is that something that you almost have to have like a, a you know weekly if not daily conversation with players just to sort of help them to focus and help them to see why they're there or is that something that like in your program you address at the beginning of the season and and don't really have to get into much or just maybe remind an individual just kind of curious because you know teams that I've coached this is it, it's a it's a constant battle to uh to keep their focus up and like you said on days that they don't want to be there uh for whatever reason whether it's the weather or whether it's kind of the the end of the year at, at practice or you know it in at least at uh you know like the division one level you're inner squatting all fall and, and the further you get in the fall the guys just it's like they get kind of sick of playing each other all the time you know they get sick of not playing somebody in another uniform so it gets harder and harder to kind of have their full focus how often do you find that you have to remind your players on your team of that or have that conversation with them or, or kind of almost, you know, motivate them in, in a way to, to stay focused on what that ultimate goal is and why they're there. I, I think it's something you have to talk about all the time. I don't think it's, you know, first week of practice, Hey, this is how we're going to practice. And this is why it's a constant, constant conversation. And I think there's, there's different levels to that conversation. And look, and, and speaking for our program specifically, our fall, season is set up for individual player development. We don't talk about team. We don't talk about winning. We don't really do a ton of team things other than being around each other all the time. It's about how can each guy become the best possible player that they can be. So going back to, okay, why do you practice? Well, I'm coming to practice because I want to be the best possible player that I can be. I'm coming to practice because I want to go pitch in the SEC. 
I'm coming to practice because I want to be a big leaguer. And I think <clears throat> guys have to understand that part of why they're there. And the other part too is, you know, and it's, it, it, it doesn't seem like much, but I think, I think words matter and language matters. When you hear guys talking about, oh, I have to go to practice. That's not, that's not a good sign. You know, if, if they truly believe that because they don't, they don't have to come to practice. Nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to get kicked out of school. It just won't get any better. And so I think framing it from that standpoint of practice is not an obligation. It's an opportunity. It's a chance for you to improve your craft. It's a chance to get better so that your friends and family are there when you sign your letter of intent, you know, to go to that D1 school. Then when we come back in January, that that shift becomes not so much how can each player get better, but how can our team get better? You know, you're coming to practice to help our team be the best team we can be. You know, having this conversation, depending on what poll you look at, uh, collegiate baseball, I think Lou Pavlovich has this number one team in Northern California, maybe the state, I don't even remember. You know, uh, our local poll has a second in Northern California. Um, you know, and I explained to our players, you know, it's cool, it's nice, but let's see if we can be the best team at practice because your season is going to be made in practice. It's not made in the games. The games are just a result of what you did in practice. So if you approach practice with the idea that, okay, this is the stuff that really matters, and if I want to be a good player, this is where I have to be good, I think it just changes the way guys come to practice and how they go about their work. For someone that would look to you as as a coach that they can learn from, a coach they, they'd like to be more like, can you talk us through a little bit, Coach Bomber, just how, how exactly you communicate this uh, this sort of mentality with your players and, and just the, the why you practice, what, you know, why are you here today type of uh, mentality and type of questions. So do you, can you just tell us this for, you know, again, for someone that would like to do it like you do, do you talk about it with your whole group? Do you find time to talk to individuals? Um, and, and again, sort of how often, or is it sort of on an as needed basis when you see that the motivation is not quite there, are you having the conversation or are you being preemptive about it? Uh, just curious about how you do it and how, again, someone that's a younger coach who might look up to you as, um, you know, as someone that they, they'd like to be like, you know, can you talk to us a little bit about how you go about that process? Yeah, I think it's kind of a combination of all those things and not to be wishy-washy, but I just, I think we, we start this conversation during the recruiting process because we want guys to know what they're getting themselves into uh, because our practices are hard, not necessarily physically demanding, but, you know, the expectations are incredibly high. Um, and, and I think when you, so kind of the idea that you, you, you almost work backwards. Like you talk to a player, okay, what it, what is it that you want? Do you want to sign? Do you want to go pitch at UCLA? What is it? And then when you when you get to that point and they've made that decision, it's like, okay, well, what needs to happen in order for you to do those things? And let's start let's start with that. So you know, you have to be a, a certain type of performer, right? You have to have certain skills. Probably gonna, most guys are going to need to throw a little bit harder. They're going to probably need to have better command. You know, maybe they need to get stronger. They need to clean up their body. Whatever it is, right? That there's 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 a path, right, to getting to one of those places. Well, that path runs through practice. And so, if you have this this ultimate goal of I want to go do this, well, you're going to have to work to do that. And that work becomes part of practice. And so, you know, when, when uh, I always say the easiest player to coach is the guy who has a ridiculously big, dramatic goal that he really wants. That's one thing. So I want to go pitch at Arkansas, but not really believe that it can happen. You know, when you have a guy who wants to do something like that, and deep down in his gut, that's what he wants, that guy's easy to coach because he's going to do the things that he needs to do. He's going to make good decisions. So I think part of it is understanding what it is that they want. And then I think also you have to be pretty open and honest in your evaluation of them 
if you have a guy who's throwing 80 miles an hour and you know he's not anywhere close to, to you know, pitching or playing in a power five school you know i think you need to it's not that you're going to tell him that he can't do it but you need to tell him like this is the path for you to get there and it's completely different than the guy that you play catch with who's already throwing 90 miles an hour and so that they can come and you know they're just going to work just as hard but they're probably going to be working on different things and i think that's where we really try hard to to get guys on every guy's not going to be on his own plan but you're going to have groups of guys who are doing specific things that suit them and, and fit their needs so i think it's a, a it's a constant reminder uh, your practice every day so I don't think that there's too many times that you should stop uh, reminding them. Uh, and, you know, part of it, too, is how you structure practice to get the most out of it. Like long, slow, boring practices, probably not ideal, you know, just because they can't pay attention long enough. <laughs> so I think, you know, how you structure practice can help with this process as well. When you say, just to go back a bit, when you say your practices are hard, it may be not like completely physically draining, but they're hard practices. Is what you just described, is that what you mean by practices being hard? Meaning essentially that when a guy's there, you know his goals, his goals are to pitch, uh, you know, at, at USC or at Arkansas or a school like that. And it's just essentially like, okay, that's your goal. So when you show up, you've got to have the pedal down the whole time you're here. You can't let up. You can't you know, take a rep off and just kind of go through a motion. Like every, every rep of everything you do has got to be to this level of focus. Is that what you mean when you say practice is hard or do you mean oh, something yeah. specifically when you say that? No, no, that's the, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's it exactly. Um, you know, I'll, I will ask them all, what is the ultimate goal? And I will put that in a spreadsheet and I'll laminate it and I'll carry it around. You know, and if I think, someone needs to be reminded I'll, I'll show it to them like remember this remember when you said this and now here you are and i just watched you waste 20 minutes of practice time because you weren't dialed in you weren't paying attention or you know in their bullpen and they're just spraying balls all over the place and there's nothing going on um but it's not about you know berating them and beating them down it's just about making them accountable <clears throat> like this if you said this is what you want to do then let's do it you know and don't forget the path it's going to take, the path you need to take to get there. Um, so, yeah, it's not anything where, you know, we're, we're yelling and screaming. It's just this is the expectation. This is what you want for yourself. Let's let's not deviate from that. And the same thing with the team, right? You know, like we talk all the time about being a state champion, being in the state tournament. That's hard to do. And so – you need to be pretty committed to what's going on in practice um, in order for that to happen. I think the other part, too, is one of these guys, I think you have to remind them and figure out what's important to them about why they're doing what they're doing. You know, some guys want to do it for themselves. Um, some guys want to do it, you know, for their parents. Um, some guys just want to do it so their teammates, you know, get to experience it or whatever it is. I think you need to kind of plug into all those things. You know, if you have a grandparent or whatever who always took you to camp and bought you all your gear or whatever, you know, that can become part of why you're a practice because you're trying to repay that debt. You're trying to honor what they did for you. <laughs> and so, you know, it's everyone's going to be a little bit different. Uh, you do your best to try to figure out what everyone's motivation might be. Um, and then when it comes to the team aspect, we talk a lot about the guys who played before them. You know, the guys who laid the, the foundation. Like, literally, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of our stadium. The players built the stadium. Like, did the labor. Not all the labor, obviously, but they did a lot of the labor for that stadium, you know, in 19, um, between 87 and 88. And... You know, the guys who are in our program now had nothing to do with that stadium being built. They didn't contribute anything to the stadium being built. And so they need to come and, and make the program better to honor those guys who did that for them. 
Um, we bring in alumni to, to talk to you guys about that. You know, like the ultimate goal, for really, beyond the state tournament, is in the spring, right? When, when we are a real team, is what are you going to do to improve the legacy of the program? Because each team and each player leaves a legacy, and what do you want that legacy to be? And I think that's a, a and again, I'm not sure that, you know, travel ball may not apply as much just because you're not together as long and, you know, the commitment isn't quite the same. Um, but I think that's an, another important concept to keep in mind is, you know, what are you doing to make the program as a whole better? Because the program is going to give to you, right? Our program is going to give to our players. What are they going to give back? So that's, you know, we're, we're working together to make things better. It's such an awesome concept, and, and those things you, I had no idea that your players built the stadium. <laughs> and yeah. I think those are those are interesting things to talk about with your players um, to try to just to try to give them a little extra motivation or a little sense of just history of the program. Coach, do you guys ever? Just a curious question. Maybe it's a dumb question, but do you guys ever make practices optional for guys? Or do you, do you consider them mandatory? Do you ever kick guys out of practice? Like if you just don't see the focus that a guy needs, do you just not necessarily like, like you said, yelling and screaming at him, but just say, Hey, it's, you got to go back. You got to go to your dorm. Like you're not focused here today. Just you got to get out of here. Like you're, you're, you're bringing other guys down. You're not here. Like you're supposed to be here. Do you ever do any of those things? Uh, and, and with the optional practice stuff, just kind of what you said at the beginning, just that you don't have to be here. You're here because. If you're, if you're here, you're here because you want to get better. So do you do you all make practices optional, and do you ever ask someone to leave practice when they're uh, they are not practicing up to the standard that they've sort of set and the goals that they have? Oh yeah, we we we've kicked guys out of practice multiple times, and it's not you know I don't say that like we're bragging, but I think guys need to understand that practice is the most important thing that we do, and if they can't get themselves to the right state of mind and be down into what's happening, then they are affecting everybody else. And there's no reason for them to be there. So, yeah, that's happened quite a few times over the years. Um, and then as far as, like, we don't, I wouldn't say they're optional practices, but we have practices that we call IDP. It stands for Individual Development Practice where basically guys are able to create their own practice plan. And I will usually want to see it um, from the pitchers. Like I, I don't want them to just show up and make it random. If you, if you have a random plan, you get random results. So there are days, and maybe it's, you know, let's say we're on the road for a night game and we get back at 11 o'clock at night. Um the next day might be an IDP kind of day or, you know, if we played on a Thursday and we're not playing Saturday, we're not playing until the following Tuesday, like that Friday is probably going to be an, an IDP kind of day. Um, and I think, you know, I think those are important. One, just mentally giving guys a break Two, you, you learn a lot about guys when you see, okay, what are they doing when they're on their own? Uh, if, if they, you know, if they're there for 20 minutes, well, that's probably not good. Um, if they're there for three hours, that's probably not good either because they don't know what they're doing. That's why they're there so long. And there's kind of a sweet spot of, you know, looking to see, does a guy have a real routine? You know, does, he, does he have a real process when it comes to practice? And so you, you can learn a lot about them in that environment. And, you know, it, it's a learning experience for them too. Because you say, all right, you know, you want to be a professional. Well, you're you're going to spend, you know, basically from November until maybe probably October, from October until spring training on your own. And you better know what you're doing. You better know how to practice. Because it's not like, you know, the pitching coordinator or your, your affiliate coach is going to be calling. I mean, he might but there's not going to be a ton of conversation, it's, you know, and they might give you a plan to follow, but you're still going to have to be the one that implements that plan. So I think it's a, a it can be a, 
an educational experience for guys too. Just figuring out, okay, what is it that I need? And how can I not have anyone supervising me and still be good? And that's really, I mean, that's the ultimate goal is to figure out the best way for you to practice. Like uh, we, we joke that there's two ways to become a, a really bad player. It's to never listen to your coaches, which I think is an obvious one. But the other side of it is to only do what your coaches tell you to do. So meaning that you just come to practice and you don't do anything else because everyone comes to practice. That's the stuff you do and when you're not at practice, when you're on your own, really is going to separate you from everybody else. Well, there I mean, have been studies that show that. Like the, in different fields, the best performers in other fields are the people who spend the most time working on their own because everyone's going to do the, the regular stuff. And, and just so for the that, perspective of like a high school coach – or even a young college coach listening to this, or even a young pro coach. Like we, you know, we all know guys that uh, that are getting pro jobs now that you know they haven't been coaching for twenty years or or whatever. Guys that have coached in college for a couple of years and have established a good relationship and or with somebody, or or just have shown they can do some certain things and they get jobs. And maybe they're into a different environment and um, you know they just they want to do the best they can without necessarily like doing too much. When you're at these kind of practices, the IDP practices. Um, you are still coaching guys up, right? Or like, if, for example, if you see a guy who's there too long or a guy that's not there long enough, like you're, I'm assuming that you are doing your job as a coach to step in and, and just kind of refine what they're doing and what their plan is. And again, I'm just sort of talking about this, like, you know, for, for those young guys that are listening to this or for a high school coach listening to this, that's, that's interested in how the college, how colleges are doing it. I mean, you are still coaching that as opposed to just kind of letting them go and letting them fail on their own and, and figure it out on their own. Like, are you, are you interceding and kind of helping them to, to refine their plan? Yeah, um, definitely. You're definitely there. You're definitely in contact with them. Uh, and again, you, you have to be a little bit careful with how much you you step in because the whole idea behind this type of practice is, all right, you are going to kind of figure this out. And so if you – there's a fine line of uh, – you know, not being proactive enough and doing too much. Because, you, you know, if you tell them, hey, this is kind of your day to do your deal, and then you're constantly interrupting them and stopping them and redirecting them, they're going to kind of look at you and go, well, remember, you told me this was my practice. I can do what I want. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. And so I, I think you have to uh, be very careful with how you approach it. Um, I think the biggest impact I have on those types of days is, you know, going to different guys and saying, okay, this is what you have done this week, right? You, you pitched this day and you, uh, you did this, this was your throwing program this day. And this is what you're going to be doing. Um, kind of build your practice around that, knowing those things. Um, because I, I, you know, I, I think that, as coaches, and I know it's a lot, of, a lot of coaches don't want to hear this, but we try to control too much sometimes. Um, you know, players know their bodies; they know how they feel. Uh, they may not always know exactly what they need, but they know more than we give them credit for. I believe, and I really believe that. And I think, you know, there's there's a time when they need to kind of navigate themselves through that. Um, not to, again, you don't just let them fail completely, right? But you do want them to kind of you know, have some input. Because like, when, when you give a guy input into his practice and his development, you're going to get way more by it. If it's always just about what you want to do and you do everything and you control everything, you're going to get some resistance. You get that where guys are just coming to practice because – they're supposed to come to practice, not because they want to be there and not because they're trying to get better. And so I think you need to be a little bit careful with, you know, kind of not overstepping, but if you tell guys, hey, you're on your own today to kind of do what you feel like you need to do, I think you need to let them do it. And that was a hard thing for me to to get used to because this is that's not something I've always done, trust me. You know, if you come to one of our practices, and especially in the fall, um, 
I mean, you might see five different groups of pitchers doing five different things. And one of those things is going to be not touching the ball. And they're just, you know, doing the recovery stuff and they're stretching and they're rolling out on the foam rollers or a lacrosse ball and they're, you know, doing some plyo care stuff. And, and it looks like they're really not doing much of anything. But, you know, if they need to recover that day, then that's what they need. That's what they should be doing. And so, you know, again, as coaches, we like control. And when you have all these different things going on at the same time, you don't have a whole lot of control. And I think that, like, for me personally, that was a big step was just it's okay to kind of let guys find their way sometimes. It's hard to do for coaches. It's hard to do for young coaches. It's, really it's hard. certainly hard to do for a two-year coach who, like, you've got to go – you got to have your guys ready to win. They don't have four years to figure it out with you. <laughs> They've got two years to figure this out right. and find a way to help your program and then and then move on again. So that's – it is not easy to do, and it takes a very mature coach uh, to be able to do that and not lose his mind in the process. Uh, no, it's, is... it's constant. Uh, honestly, and I have no problem saying this. It's really hard for me to do, but I also know that it's like you know, success leaves leaves clues, and it's worked. And I'm pretty sure it will continue to work. It's like, it's not, you know, I say that, and I think the assumption is that you know, week one of practice, guys are just off doing what they want, and it's never that. It's you know, six or seven weeks in, and guys have kind of kind of got a rhythm and they kind of know what's going on. They kind of know what the program is going to be. And that's when I can kind of, okay, I can take a step back here a little bit for some of these guys. Like obviously if the guy's doing a bullpen, I'm not letting him try to figure that out. I'm going to be standing right next to him, you know, helping him through it and, and talking a lot. Um, but I think, you know, there's just when, when you allow players to be part of the development process, they get more out of it when they have some input as to what's going on you get more out of it um but at the same time i think that's where that you know the initial conversation right where this all started was why do you practice and i think you have to get to the root of that you know to really make sure that guys are doing what they should be doing and if a guy can't answer that you know it's it's, it makes it a lot tougher. And I remember seeing this kind of where, like, this whole thought process started for me was, it was several years ago, and I remember it was TCU, Coach Slosh, and uh, they had a sign in their dugout in the College World Series, and the sign was "Get to," like G E T T O, versus "Have to," H A V E T O, right? And that was like. To me, that was like a, a punch in the face. Like, that makes so much sense. When you get players who feel like they have the opportunity to come to practice, they're lucky enough to come to practice, I think it changes the way they're going to practice when they can understand that concept. And that, you know, one of the things that we talk about is <clears throat> ask your friends who are, that you played with who are in college right now that aren't playing baseball. Ask them how bad they would want to be here right now. Ask them how badly they'd want to be lifting at 7 o'clock in the morning, you know, with their baseball buddies. <clears throat> I think this, it, it's just about kind of reshaping the perspective of what it is they're doing. What a great perspective and a really, really good podcast. This is Descaje Bomberry, everybody. He's the pitching coach recruiting coordinator, mental skills coach at Sac City College, junior college program in Sacramento, California. Um, this has been the Real Dirt podcast where we talked about specifically why do you practice. Coach Bomber, this has been awesome. Um, I've learned a lot. I always learn a lot from you and really appreciate our conversations. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. No problem, Jeff. Anytime.